Okay, question three. Right, so sodium carbonate can exist as different hydrated salts with the general formula Na2CO3 in H2O. To determine N, you're using a 250 centimetres cubed solution containing 8.10 grams of hydrated sodium carbonate. 25 centimetre cubed samples of this solution were titrated. Uh, you're told the concentration of the hydrochloric. Following results are obtained. You've got data. Describe the procedure for the accurate preparation of the 250 solution from the weighed sample of hydrated sodium carbonate. Now, I've actually just pulled the um, Morris scheme for this one because they're being very precise about what's accepted here. So it is just making a standard solution, but they're giving it two marks. And what they're expecting is if you have all of these four points, you'll get two. If you have two or three of them, you'll get one. OK, and otherwise it's just a few, it's an absolutely straight call about how you would do a standard solution. OK, for B, calculate the number of moles of sodium carbonate in the 250 solution. Now that involves a little bit more work. Now there's lots of ways that you can do this. I'm just going to move it down slightly so I've got enough space for how I've done it. OK, so I'm going to use C1 V1 over N1 is equal to C2 V2 over N2 because then I can keep everything neatly in my calculator and hopefully avoid weird rounding errors and things. Okay, so the information that we have, so this is my sodium carbonate because this is the one that I'm wanting to work with. Okay, so I'm looking for concentration, so C1, my V1. Now the reason I also like using this is because I'm not going to have to shift it into litres because this is a ratio and 25 centimetres cubed would be the same as 25 litres if it was 25 on the other side, you know, so it, it's just I can keep them as long as they're in the same units. It's not going to impact. So I'm just going to keep that as 25. OK, and my N1 for this one is a 1. OK, and C2V2 over N2. So our concentration this time is of the hydrochloric. So 0 0.358 multiplied by my volume, which is my titer but my average of my titer, so 19.45, and over my N2, which is in this case 2. Okay, so I'm going to do this section first. So when I do the first half of this equation, leaving me just with C1 times 25, um, I get, I had to calculate this in, where if I put it? Uh, so I've got 3.48155. It's just doing this bit, okay? I'm going to have to move over here, sorry. Okay, so C1 is going to be 3.48155 divided by 25, and that gives me 0 0.139262. You know, you can go on for quite some time, but we're just going to uh, leave that in there just now. Um, now, I've got, now I've got my concentration. I can now get my moles. Moles is concentration times volume, so just my straight up simple formula. Uh, so I'm going to use this number, 0 0.139262, multiplied by 250 mil, which is 0.25 in litres. So it's 0 0.0348155, which we're going to take to 0 0.035. Okay, that is the moles. Okay, right. Next one, I'm going to have to use set the space inside here uh, calculate the value of n in the formula okay so this involves there's lots and lots of different ways you could do this okay so let's let's go with the way that i've set it out for me and hopefully you can follow what's going on right so what i have is the number of moles so if i have the number of moles i can work out the mass okay so the ma the mass of my sodium carbonate is just moles times formula mass okay i've got my moles at 0 0.035 and I need my formula mass so formula mass I'm just going to do is my standard so we're going NaCO so uh, two of these one of these and three of these 16 12 23 so not however you're doing it you know if you uh, you know see the lines of the list whichever way you like to do it so do that and I now have a mass at 3.69 grams. Now the reason that's important is because you know your original mass was actually 8.1 so I can take this away 
to get my mass of water. So if I take my 8.10, take away 3.69, I get that the mass of water is 4.41 grams. Now you cannot do a ratio at this point, okay, because my ratio has to be moles. So, but now I have mass of water and that's really important because from mass of water, I can now go moles. Moles is just gonna be mass times formula mass. So 4.41 times 18. And so that gives you 0 0.245. And now finally, I can do my ratio. So my ratio is going to be my 0 0.035 to 0 0.245. Ratio has to be whole numbers. Okay, so um, take your smallest number, divide it by both of them. This worked quite nicely. That gives you a one to seven. Seven is your answer. It's quite a lot of work for two marks, but because you're only working in your moles mass formula mass, they expect you to, you know, maybe that's why it's only a two. Okay, right. Last question, and probably the hardest because it's a three marker. You can see I've pulled a huge... Um, gobbit of stuff. Okay, so titration is a very useful analytical skill, analytical technique, sorry, for volumetric analysis. Using your knowledge of chemistry, discuss factors which should be considered when selecting appropriate chemicals. I have just lifted the entire chunk of stuff from the content statements about this. So what I'm expecting that you're going to go on about, okay, you definitely are going to have to talk about standard solutions. So if you talk about standard solutions, then you're going to see what it is and how you would make it. Okay, you might talk about uh, the preparation, but not absolutely essential. You know, that this bit here, maybe not absolutely essential because we're talking about the selection of chemicals, but you definitely are going to have to talk about using a standard solution. And you may definitely, in fact, definitely have to talk about primary standards. Okay. Um, and then you're going to have to talk about which ones are good primary standards and which ones are not. So all of this stuff down here, this is nice. Okay. And then really importantly would be the type of titration that you're using. And therefore, if you're using C and acid base or you're using complex, complex and metric, or if you're using redox, how you're going to be able to work from that. So this bit up here, choosing an indicator, one that will give you an indication that you can use, that's really going to be important. OK, so you may talk also about if you can standardise. Um, these would I say be the main ones. Dilution again, maybe. There's not actually a lot to lose from this um, other than what you're doing. Um, back titration you're not going to have to talk about. OK, so have a look at the content, make sure you're happy with it and then give yourself a kind of list of what you think you would do to talk about the appropriate chemicals. The main thing is going to be having the ability to have either a standard solution or a solution that you can standardize to give you um, your correct titration. Okay, without it, you can't get a titer that, that is available to, to work with. Okay, that's that question.